Hey everyone, today I'm going to be showing you what a whirlpool would look like in zero G's. So if there were no gravity, what would this whirlpool look like? And along with this, I'm gonna be showing you what happens to bubbles in zero gravity as well. Now the first question you might have is, how am I going to simulate zero gravity on Earth? Well, it's actually easier than you think. You just have to drop something or even throw something up in the air. So for example, I have an accelerometer on my phone here. So no matter how I turn it, if you add up the vectors x, y, and z acceleration, then you'll get one g. That's because there's one g of gravity always pulling down on us on Earth. You can see that it varies a little bit when I move it up and down. You can get it to spike a lot because I'm just accelerating it in different directions. So in order for the accelerometer to register this downward pull, it has to have something pushing up on it. If there's nothing pushing up on it, then it can't feel a force. So what happens is if I throw my phone up in the air, actually as soon as I let go of my phone, there's not going to be any acceleration. It'll immediately drop to zero. Not when it reaches the top of the peak and then comes back down, but actually right when it leaves my hand. So you can see that long drop in acceleration there. That went exactly to zero G's as soon as it left my hands. So what that means is if you just throw something up in the air or just drop it, as long as there's nothing touching it, it'll just register zero G. So it won't feel any downward pull on it. For example, the only reason that you feel like you're being weighted down and pulled down is because the ground is actually pushing up on you. If you didn't have a ground pushing up on you, then you wouldn't feel weighted down. Now a little caveat to this is to remember that when you're falling on Earth, usually in the atmosphere, you're falling through air. And if you're falling through air, then that air is hitting you and it's pushing up on you a little bit. So you are actually feeling a little bit of gravity as the air is pushing on you. But the more aerodynamic the thing is that you're dropping, the closer you're going to get to zero Gs. In fact, the most perfect simulation of zero Gs or microgravity, they call it, is to drop something in a vacuum because then you don't have any air pushing upward on it whatsoever. So you can get really close to zero Gs. In fact, the interesting thing about air pushing up on you is when you reach your terminal velocity, when you're falling through the sky and you're not accelerating anymore, that's when you've reached your terminal velocity. Actually, the air is pushing up on you with as much force as you'd feel as if you were just laying on the ground. So you pretty much don't feel weightless anymore once you reach your terminal velocity. So when you fall out of the sky skydiving, you don't actually feel weightless as you would in space. But if you use something that's really aerodynamic, it doesn't make a big difference, especially in the experiments that we're going to be doing today. So what I'm going to be doing to simulate this microgravity is to drop these two liter bottles that I have connected in the center here. And so basically I can have bubbles coming up on one end of it while the water's falling on the other end. And I have my GoPro connected here. So I'm gonna make bubbles in it and drop it. And then I'm going to make a whirlpool in it and drop it. And then I'll explain why what we saw happened. Now the Whirlpool one is actually really interesting. First, let's make some bubbles. So you can see that as soon as we drop it, the bubbles no longer move upward. So what happens to bubbles in zero gravity? They don't go anywhere. There's no up or down to go anywhere, and so they just stay exactly where they are. So the bubbles can't rise from the bottom bottle to the top bottle, they just stay where they are. Okay, now let's try the whirlpool to see what this looks like. Whoa, it just flies out to the side. So it just flies up and climbs the sides of the bottles. Look at it, as soon as we release it to zero G, the water just flies and rises up the sides of the bottle. Now this is a really interesting effect. 
Let me explain what's going on here with the bubbles and with the whirlpool. Okay, so first let me explain why the bubbles stayed where they were. So let's say this is our water here, and normally on Earth, when you have some gravity, as you go down in depth, the pressure increases. So the deeper you go, the higher the pressure is. That's because the deeper you go, the more water is on top of you pushing downward, so the pressure is greater. So if you have a bubble in the water, there's our bubble, that means the pressure on the bottom of it is bigger than the pressure on top of it. And so because the pressure on the bottom is bigger than the pressure on the top, the bubble of course is going to get pushed upward because it's pushing it this way. This force is greater than this force, so the bubble goes upward. And so when you're in a zero G environment, the pressure does not increase as you go downward. It stays exactly the same. So that means that P1 is equal to P0. So these two pressures are equal. And so because of that, that means that when you have a bubble in the water, the pressure on the bottom isn't greater than the pressure on the top. So they're now equal. And so there's no driving force to push the bubble any direction. It just stays right where it is. It's exactly balanced right where it is. So whenever you have bubbles in zero gravity, they don't go anywhere. They just stay where they are. So there's no buoyancy without gravity. Gravity is what causes buoyancy. Okay, so we can understand what happens with a bubble. So why did that happen with the whirlpool? Why did the water just fly out to the side? Well, let me explain that as well. So why does the water even look like this in the first place? Well, remember that the water is spinning around in a circle. I made it spin around in a circle. And whenever you have something spin around in a circle, a new force term appears, a centrifugal force. And people always correct me and try to get me to say centripetal force, which is also correct, but in a different reference frame. If you use the reference frame for a rotating body, then a new force term appears called centrifugal force. So it's an apparent force that appears when you're spinning something around in a circle. So it causes the water to be pushed to the sides like that. So centrifugal force or centripetal force, whatever you wanna say, both are right, causes the water to be pushed out to the sides like that. So you have two forces interacting here. You have the centrifugal force that pushes the water to the sides, and then you also have gravity wanting to flatten the water back down. So the water is being driven up the sides of the container because the water is spinning, but also it wants to be flat because gravity is pulling the water down. So this water that rolls up to the top wants to be pulled back down, but it can't because it's spinning around in a circle. So basically what this means is the less gravity that you you have, the higher the water can rise in the container because it doesn't have that driving force flattening the water. And so if this line were where 1G is, then maybe a half of G would be right here. And then if you go all the way to 0G, then the centrifugal force just takes over and the water is spinning around and it just lines the container just like this. So it's spinning around in a circle, so it just gets pushed to the sides of the container. So in zero gravity, you don't really get a whirlpool. You just get a constant coating of the container. So that means, actually I've never seen this experiment, but based on what I saw here, if an astronaut in the International Space Station tried to spin the water bottle like that and make a tornado, he wouldn't be able to do it. It would just line the sides of the container as he spun it. And thanks for watching another episode of the Action Lab. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, don't forget to subscribe if you haven't subscribed yet and also hit the bell so you can be notified when my latest video comes out. And also don't forget to check out theactionlab.com where you can get the Action Lab experiment boxes. And thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.